a little bit of hair left on my head. I want it on my head. It, it, I'm not going to take a haircut. And I'm, oh, I'm not encouraging any Ghanaian to take a haircut. Patriotism is, is on various levels. And, and I think most of us have already chalked 99% of patriotism at this time in our lives. So le don't let some young whippersnapper come and tell us to, 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 to cut uh, our, our, our expenditure and things like that. And it's not even as if most pensioners are living in luxury. All they've done is to show up their monies in such a way that uh, that added to their uh, month, they, they, if they, they, they are earning pensions from their former places of employment, how they can have room to maneuver. Who said old age has to end up in poverty? It shouldn't. And it is because of that that people invested. Hi, welcome. It is no secret that Ghana is in the midst of a public debt crisis, with its debt having been increasing at a rate that surpasses the growth of the nation's gross domestic product in the past 10 years. In the past year alone, Ghana's debt has skyrocketed to over 575 billion CDs, with the country's debt to GDP ratio reaching the staggering 93.5% as of November 2022. Following negotiations and a staff level agreement with the International Monetary Fund in December 2022 for a 3 billion extended credit facility, the government announced a debt exchange program which has left many pensioners concerned. The former Chief Justice of Ghana, Madam Sophia Akufo, recently weighed in on the matter and had some strong words for the government. Let's take a closer look at what she had to say and why this is such an important issue. Talk, analyse. But uh, you're asking me a question where, which, if I answer it in a certain way, some economist will tell me I know nothing. Yeah, I know nothing. All I say is that if there is the need to restructure debts, before you even decide you're going to restructure debts, the first thing you need to do, I believe, is to look within your what is fully under your control and see where you can cut this, you can postpone this, you can reprioritize and be honest with the people of Ghana because of A, B, C, D, E, N, F. We will shelve this, we will put this uh, on, on, on the back burner, we will prioritize this because it has to do with education, it has to do with uh, 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 a human life and so on and so forth. You don't just jump at the low hanging fruit and uh, the people whose money is in your hand and you're going to tell them, okay, uh, your money is in my hand and this is how you're going to get it back. It's rude, it's wicked, it's unlawful, it's not right. It, 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 it lacks good faith, it lacks humanity it, because, oh, you know, we are sitting here because we are well enough to come. Do you know how many people are, are languishing at home? Do you know how many people who are not even, uh, you know, they are in such a bad state, they are not even aware of what's going on, but they are, they, it's their investments that have been keeping them alive. You don't know, you don't care. You know, and, and uh, you do not, you do not touch the the, 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 the old people you don't you don't you do not touch the funds of the of the uh, of the aged when you have not done other things you have not done due diligence you have not checked on what other things you do we are not your last resort you haven't reached the point of last resort if they think they've reached the point of last resort they should prove it to us and show us 
why this is the only solution and in any case it's not a lawful solution so they can they should not even go there because if they change the law today it will not affect what has already accrued so long as government has properties i can sue them and i can claim my my entitlements through there but it should not come to that i'm a ghanaian i'm a ghanaian citizen there's today but tomorrow ghana will continue to exist with or without kenuforiata and so on and so forth but deal fairly deal respectfully deal properly with people whose rights you know you're trying to trample on and you're trying to use cajolment and dubious arguments and sentimentality listen when you are old when you're a pensioner when you know where every penny you spend and need comes from <laughs> sentiment does not arise it's what is right that matters so the years we've got left uh, by god's grace let us live those years according to how we had after many years of working faithfully i think everybody here and every pensioner worked faithfully we should allow we should allow faithfulness to pay faithfulness uh, principles excellence we should allow it to pay and even if the government will not allow it to pay people have invested their the fruits of their excellence and and and, and you want to throw it away because you think you can no you can he, he cannot it's not lawful for him to do it period i believe these unfortunate events could have been prevented if the government had taken action earlier certainly the former chief justice's words were quite powerful and madam is right you do not touch the old people the International Monetary Fund even acknowledged that the proposed key reforms as part of the conditions for the extended credit facility are designed to maintain public finance viability while protecting the vulnerable. So let's do that. Let's protect the vulnerable. Clearly, these are no ordinary times, but there is still the opportunity to reduce the size of government and cut some non-essential expenditure. Ghana must work in the best interest of all. Until next time, stay safe, stay informed. Bye.